Imagine waking up one morning and trying to log into your favorite website, but nothing works. It's not just one website. Every site you visit crashes. You check your phone, apps won't load. The entire internet seems to have just stopped. Sounds like a nightmare, right? Well, that nightmare became a reality in 2016 when hackers took down huge parts of the internet for a full day. Get ready for the story of the Mirai botnet attack. Let's rewind to 2016. It was a time when the Internet of Things was booming. Every home had smart cameras, baby monitors, smart refrigerators, and even connected thermostats. It seemed like a dream come true. Your house, your devices, all connected in an easy, efficient network. But here's the thing. These devices were often sold with little to no security measures. Weak passwords, unprotected networks, and minimal user awareness created the perfect storm for hackers to exploit. These seemingly innocent devices were, in fact, ticking time bombs waiting to be turned into cyber weapons. That's exactly what happened in September 2016, when hackers unleashed the Mirai botnet. The Mirai botnet wasn't made up of high-tech computers or sophisticated hardware. No, it was powered by something far more unsuspecting, everyday consumer devices. Things like IP cameras, DVRs, and baby monitors. These devices, designed for convenience, often had default usernames and passwords that were easy for hackers to guess. And that's where the Mirai botnet found its power. The hackers behind this botnet found a way to hijack these unsecured devices, turning them into zombie machines under their control. Once the botnet had taken control of hundreds of thousands of devices, it was ready to launch an attack that would send shockwaves through the digital world. The attack came in the form of a distributed denial-of-service DDoS assault, one of the most destructive types of cyber attacks. In a DDoS attack, the hacker floods a server with more requests than it can handle, essentially causing the server to crash. But this wasn't just a few thousand requests, it was millions, and the targets were huge. The Mirai botnet set its sights on DIN, one of the most important domain name system, DNS, providers on the internet. If you think of the internet as a giant map, DNS is like the GPS. It translates human-readable website addresses, like google.com, into machine-readable IP addresses. Without it, we wouldn't be able to access websites or services the way we do. By overwhelming DIN servers with millions of requests, the attackers managed to cause massive outages. As a result, some of the biggest websites on the internet went offline for hours. Twitter, Reddit, Netflix, Spotify, gone. These are sites that millions of people rely on daily, and the attack didn't just disrupt services, it sent a shockwave across the globe. People were confused. The internet, which we take for granted, seemed to be broken. Many didn't understand why it was happening, and worse, they didn't know when it would end. Behind the Mirai botnet were Paris Ja, Josiah White, and a third collaborator, Dalton Norman. Paris Ja was a student at Rutgers University and also owned a DDoS mitigation company called ProTraf Solutions. Josiah White and Dalton Norman were his collaborators in this scheme. They rented out portions of their botnet to other cyber criminals and used it for extortion, demanding protection money from companies to avoid DDoS attacks. The botnet infected over 600,000 IoT devices at its peak, using them to launch record-breaking DDoS attacks exceeding 1 terabit per second, temporarily crippling major websites and services like DIN, OVH, Netflix, Airbnb, and the security blog Krebs on security. The creators, Paras Ja, Josiah White, and Dalton Norman, used Mirai to attack Minecraft servers and Rutgers University, running a DDoS mitigation company that ironically offered protection against attacks they themselves launched as a form of racketeering. Their botnet allowed them to launch massive DDoS attacks on competitors' servers to eliminate competition and then offer their own services as a solution to the very problems they created. This scheme generated significant profits, but also attracted law enforcement attention. After Mirai's source code was publicly released by them in late 2016, many copycat botnets emerged, causing widespread internet disruptions beyond their original targets. The trio were questioned by the FBI shortly after Mirai was discovered, and eventually pleaded guilty in December 2017 to charges related to creating and operating the botnet. Instead of prison sentences, they received five years probation, 2,500 hours of community service, 
and were ordered to pay restitution of $127,000. This leniency was due to their exceptional cooperation with law enforcement, helping to identify victims of other botnets and assisting in reducing DDoS attacks during peak periods.